That's me. And this is our project. It's a 5,000 square foot meadow that we've been developing for the past five years. There's been a tremendous amount of ups and downs, lots of trial and error, lots of failures, and a whole lot of success. Today, we're gonna to share three realities of growing a native wildflower meadow. Three things that I wish we would have known before we got started. And we're gonna pass these three things on to you. And make sure you follow until the end because the third one is super controversial, but I think it's the most important out of all of them. The first reality we had to come to terms with is your meadow is probably not gonna look exactly the way you dreamed about. And what I mean by that is that although you might have a plan, nature's plan is definitely going to win out. We planted probably about 20 to 25 different seed species. And after three or four years, we've noticed that some never germinated and others that were dominating in the beginning are now just thinning out. They're getting replaced by the more dominant species. Because nature will find a way to do what it does. The strongest plants will survive based upon their ideal conditions. So in your mind, you might have a vision, but in reality, you're gonna just have to learn to go with the flow and let your plan adapt and naturally evolve. On to the second reality of growing a native wildflower meadow. Any way you slice it, you're going to get invasives, whether it's from disturbing the soil or from bird droppings. Species that you do not want will appear in your meadow. Right now, we're battling a massive infestation of mugwort as well as Canadian goldenrod. We definitely have always had the attitude of going with the flow and letting nature do what it's going to do. But the problem with some invasives are they will take over your entire garden or meadow. For example, this goldenrod showed up last year and I would say it occupied about 5% of the meadow. Now it's almost at 25 to 35% of the entire meadow and it is super aggressive. So what's eventually gonna happen is the meadow's gonna turn into a one season monoculture. No diversity in plants, and no diversity in animals and wildlife. And the same thing goes for this mugwort. We've tried to do everything from burning it, to smothering it, to mowing it, and cutting it back, but it just keeps coming back. So in the end, you're going to need a plan to eradicate species that you do not want invading your space. There is just no way around it. Which brings me to the last and most important reality that also happens to be the most controversial. If you can't control the invasive plants, you're going to have to encounter an ethical and moral dilemma. To spray or not to spray. When I look back at the goal of the meadow, which was to bring in a diverse ecosystem for pollinators and wildlife, and with the current trajectory being a one season monoculture, in my opinion, after you've tried absolutely everything, you may just have to bite the bullet and use some chemicals to destroy the invasive plants. The process is a moral and ethical decision because it could affect the wildlife in the area, the deer, the squirrels, the rabbits, the little kitty cats in the neighborhood, and of course, the pollinators. That's definitely a tough decision. We've been struggling with that decision for well over a year because we saw the signs being exposed with the native plants. So moving forward, I decided to contact a professional ecologist to learn about the advantages and disadvantages of using chemicals. I haven't thoroughly decided on what would be the course of action, but I do know if I end up using chemicals, we're going to temporarily fence off the areas that I spray so none of the wildlife can be affected. Now, keeping out the bees and the pollinators, well, the plan there is to wait until the meadow goes dormant to minimize the risk to the pollinators. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure, and if anybody has any suggestions, I would also absolutely love to read about them in the comments below. Please share your experience and your story and help me make the right decision because it certainly is a tough one. And that's a wrap. 
thank you for watching. We hope that you got something out of this video and we hope that you can apply it to your meadow. And remember, if you have any questions, please leave us a comment down below. And last thing, please subscribe. It really helps our channel out. It helps us get the message out there and it helps us grow and keeps us motivated. Mm -hmm.